During my last visit home, I noticed some big changes in mom. She'd lost weight and the house was a mess. That's when I decided to get help. I called Synergy Home Care. They provide caring companionship, medication reminders, even run errands and help prepare meals. Choose in-home trusted care services anywhere from 2 to 24 hours a day by calling Synergy Home Care. We are here for you. It's like having a doctor in the family. Call or log on to their website to schedule a free in-home assessment at no cost. I did it for mom. I did it for me. With violent crime in our communities and the cost of gas, food, and medicine rising, we need a leader in the assembly that we can trust to fight for us, not a quitter like Mark Pazin. While murders in Merced County hit an all-time high, Mark shamefully abandoned his post as sheriff, quitting in the middle of a gang crisis to take a fancy Sacramento political gig. We can't trust a politician like Mark Pazin who already turned his back on us. The stakes are too high. I'm Adam Gray, and I approve this message. John Duarte doesn't live here and hasn't done a thing to lower gas prices. I voted to stop the tax on diesel for tractors and trucks, and I wrote the bill to suspend the gas tax. I took on Sacramento to protect our water and our jobs. That's why Valley sheriffs and local newspapers support me. I'm the independent Democrat for Congress. We all want the best for our planet, but sorting food waste at home can be confusing. Mid-Valley Disposal is here to help our communities with the recent changes to green waste disposal. Our state-of-the-art composting facility combines food scraps and green waste into nutrient-rich compost. That keeps food waste out of landfills, an important step in contributing to a cleaner and healthier Central Valley. We promise to do our part as you continue to do yours. Learn more at midvalleydisposal.com. Local news that matters. This is KC24 News Sunrise. Coming up on Sunrise, the future of affirmative action. Now in the hands of the high court. Two cases where two universities are defending their policies. Plus, a years-long battle for the tax records for President Trump could come to an end as he asked the U.S. Supreme Court to block the House from obtaining the documents. Good morning. Welcome to KC24 Sunrise. I'm Brody Logan. Caroline Collins has the day off. Thank you for waking up with us at 6.02 a.m. This is the first day of November. What is it going to be like outside on this first day? Ruben Contreras has a look at your forecast. It has a little rain in it. We've got that first storm of the season. It's going to take a while to get here. Everything's calm on our radar right now, but say about 5, 6 o'clock this evening, you're going to see those uh, rain showers finally develop across the Central Valley. So it's going to be cloudy for most of today, a little breezy. Temperatures a little bit cooler compared to the past few days. Highs in the 60s in most of the valley right now, upper 40s to low 50s. But rain this afternoon about 3 o'clock or so for Merced. Fresno is probably going to have to wait closer to 4 or 4. 30, and then it moves into Tulare County later on this afternoon. Same deal for portions of Kings County with Hanford up in the Sierra. It's going to start off as rain, but it's going to transition to snow by tonight. That's when snow levels will drop down to 5,000 feet. So shaver rain this afternoon, but definitely snow in tonight, plus a winter storm warning in effect. We'll talk more about the rain in a few minutes, but first for now, we'll send it back to you. Well, affirmative action is on the line at colleges and universities across the nation. Monday, the Supreme Court heard arguments in two major cases where Harvard and the University of North Carolina defended the use of race within their admission policies. Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson joins us now with more. Good morning, Rashad. Good morning, Brody. The, the Supreme Court has upheld affirmative action twice in the last two in the 20 years, but the most recent time was in 2016. But there's a concern with this solidly conservative majority that that could change. My identity can never be limited. Supporters of affirmative action rallied outside of the Supreme Court Monday. I believe that affirmative action is one way for all of us to be able to tell our stories and our truth. The high court heard arguments in two pivotal cases from Harvard and the University of North Carolina. One benefit, one is harm to the same degree. In separate arguments, the schools emphasized the practice is necessary to promote diversity on campus. Newly appointed Justice Katunji Brown Jackson, the first black woman to serve on the high court, said race is just one of several factors considered by the schools. When you give your race, you're not getting any special points. It's being treated just on par with other factors in the system. But Justice Samuel Alito suggested the inclusion of race is innately unfair. If you give a plus to a person who falls within the category of underrepresented 
a minority, but not to somebody else, you are disadvantaging the latter student. A ruling in this case is not expected until the spring. Brody? All right, Rashad, thank you. Former President Donald Trump is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to block House Democrats from obtaining his tax records. This after a federal appeals court declined to reconsider a ruling that will give his tax returns to the House Ways and Means Committee. The high court has recently rejected similar requests by Mr. Trump. If the Supreme Court does not intervene, the former president's taxes will be disclosed, ending a years-long battle for the records. The criminal case against the Trump Organization is underway in New York. Prosecutors claim the company ran a 15-year scheme to help executives evade taxes. The star witness is longtime chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg. He pled guilty to 15 felony charges in August. Weisselberg has agreed to pay nearly $2 million in taxes, interest, and penalties, in addition to testifying about the Trump Organization. Former President Donald Trump has not been charged and is calling the case a political witch hunt. New developments in the brutal attack against Paul Pelosi, the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The suspect of 42-year-old David DePappy, formally charged with attempted murder, assault, and attempted kidnapping. Monday, law enforcement says the attack was politically motivated. So can you definitively say now this was obviously politically motivated? Yes, it appears as though this was based on his statements um, and comments that were made in that house during his encounter with Mr. Pelosi that this was politically motivated. The DOJ's investigation also revealed the suspect through questioning originally planned to break Speaker Pelosi's kneecaps because he wanted to show members of Congress that there are, in his words, consequences to their actions. You need to borrow some money soon. Get ready to pay even more interest. This Wednesday, the Federal Reserve may be raising interest rates by at least 0.75%. This would be the Fed's fourth highest rate. The housing market is already starting to plummet as mortgage rates go up. There are worries the Fed could send the economy into a recession with the high rate increase. So security advocates are calling for updates to their program. Policymakers want a change in supplemental security income. Experts say the system has outdated rules and needs adjustments. Lawmakers are pushing for changes and limits. Currently, individuals get a maximum $841 and couples get $1,261 per month. Critics argue beneficiaries can have basically no savings and that the program penalizes couples with two SSI beneficiaries. All right, we've been following some breaking news all morning out of central Fresno where there is a police investigation at a bank ATM. Gabe Salazar is there. He is live at Cedar and Shields with more. Good morning. Yeah, Brody, a man was just taken to the hospital and the suspect is nowhere to be found. So we are at the Bank of America by Cedar and Shields. If you take a look behind me, so just beyond that uh, crime scene tape is where the victim called police. You can see the red box there where uh, crews were rendering aid. So this is what police say happened. They say just before five in the morning, uh, the victim was just across the street from where we are now. When another man approached him, they exchanged some words. There was some sort of argument argument or confrontation and then the suspect proceeded to stab the victim twice. Now police say that the suspect was last seen heading northbound on Cedar on foot. He was uh, described wearing a black t-shirt, camo shorts and wearing a black backpack. So police say to just be on the lookout for anyone matching that description. Uh, but uh, police say that the victim in this incident was actually might have been involved in a prior incident about two days ago where there was some sort of fight but at this point they don't know if the suspect and the victim in this incident knew each other uh, but we, what we know is that the victim was taken to the hospital he is expected to be okay for now reporting live in central fresno gabe salazar brody back to you all right gabe thank you very much kc 24 sunrise time 609 still ahead even two minutes a day of exercise can be good for your health we're going to show you what a new study shows and why just two minutes works and rain finally returns to the Central Valley. First year 40 algae forecast brought to you by Boz Allergy. Elm and Juniper, the top Holland's were the low rains through Friday. I'll show you when the rain finally arrives as Casey Sunrise continues. Wildfire smoke threatens your health, whether you're on the front lines or in your front yard. Prop 30 helps prevent wildfires and reduce toxic smoke so we all have cleaner air to breathe. Yes, on Prop 30. Now your centralvalley.com pros who know. When a dental office has its own on-site laboratory, they can make your teeth while you wait. Call Better Life for details regarding their on-site lab today.
For more expert advice, go to yourcentralvalley.com slash pros who know. As a student athlete, my time at Fresno State did a lot more than prepare me for a career in football. My academic education prepared me for success after football. But Fresno State doesn't receive enough funding from California to be all it can be for this valley. Measure E will help our university modernize, grow, and deliver a world-class education to students right here. Please join Fresno State's team and vote yes on Measure E. Politician Adam Gray. You pay his salary, but he skips work. Skipped over 150 votes. Didn't even vote to stop the gas tax. When he does show up, his votes make things worse. Gray voted for a multi-million dollar tax on dairy farmers, a three million dollar tax on grape growers, and a massive tax increase on livestock feed. Adam Gray. We're better off without him. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Prop 29 is all about politics and not about patient care at all. One special interest, SEIU UHW, is pushing yet another dangerous dialysis proposition that threatens the lives of 80,000 dialysis patients. The same special interests are picking on dialysis year after year. If I could tell special interests one thing. Please stop. Enough is enough. Please leave our dialysis patients alone. Please protect us. Vote no on 29. This is the reason for the season. And this, and this, and this. This is a time for joy. So forget the compromise. Because at Home Goods, you can spend less and find all your heart desires on every shelf all season long. There are more gifts to give, more decor to deck the halls, and more to make you the host with the most again and again. Because your favorite things about this season don't cost a fortune. They're found. Home Goods. Go finding. Don't let the insurance company push you around. Get a law firm that can push them around. The team at Jacoby & Myers has gotten our clients up to 10 times the insurance company's original offer. Don't settle for less. Choose Jacoby & Myers. California has the worst air pollution in the country. It's fueling a health crisis that's getting worse. Prop 30 will combat wildfires and reduce tailpipe emissions so Californians have clean air to breathe. Yes on 30. Welcome back on this Tuesday morning. All is calm right now, but we're expecting rain to finally return to the valley by the end of today into tonight. Let's show you the live radar first this morning. Things are calm. It might be picking up a sprinkle toward Merced, but most of the actual rain, heavy rain, doesn't arrive until late this afternoon, this evening. So heading out the door this morning, things are going to be fine for your drive to work or school. Uh, conditions will be chilly out there, but conditions looking all right here from a live picture thanks to Caltrans. This is their traffic cam at the 99 and Shaw Avenue in West Central Fresno. And of course, coming home that's when students will need the jacket and umbrellas cloudy skies at two o'clock this afternoon but some showers develop to the north between three and four o'clock but even the late in the afternoon into the evening five o'clock that's our best chance of rain especially for parts of fresno county finally moving into larry county breezy cooler today highs in the 60s we drop into the 50s tomorrow still a chance of a shower in the morning into the weekend we do have another chance of rain i'll show you exactly when with the 70 forecast in a few minutes first for now we'll send it back to you there is some hope that by this time next year, we could finally have a vaccine to protect against RSV, which is currently spreading across the country. Experts say four new RSV vaccines could be reviewed by the FDA. More than a dozen others are in testing. One injection is designed to be given right after birth to protect infants from the potentially life-threatening virus for as long as six months. The antibody shot was 75% effective in a recent clinical trial. Officials say nearly a quarter million young children die each year from complications of RSV. In an effort to combat medical misinformation online, YouTube will allow credible medical professionals to use the platform to help people make better decisions about their health. Over the past year, YouTube has teamed with leading health care organizations to create high quality health content on the platform. Now, healthcare professionals like doctors and nurses can apply to add informative content. The news comes a year after YouTube announced a total ban on vaccine misinformation. If you don't have time to exercise, a new study finds just working out two minutes a day can be still be good for your health. Scientists at the University of Sydney found that two minute bursts of vigorous physical activity could help people live longer. Researchers studied data from a group of adults between 40 and 69 years old who wore activity trackers on their wrist. They found that increasing the intensity of exercise is associated with a lower risk of 
developing cardiovascular disease. A previous long-term study found that benefits from short dynamic workouts. What is it, uh, seven minute abs? Or what if someone comes out with six minute abs? No, it's just KC24 Sunrise Time, 615, we'll be right back. Your health matters to you and to KC24. That's why we started Buddy Check 24 back in 1996. I've been honored to meet you, walk with you, and help raise breast cancer awareness. I've listened to your stories of courage and shared important health information. Every month, I'll remind you to call your buddy for life-saving self-exams. Go to yourcentralvalley.com and download our app to receive these alerts. Together, you and Buddy Check 24 will continue to save lives. There's a new energy and dedication in Clovis. Des House is ready to take Clovis safely and boldly into the future while respecting the past. I'm Des House. I'm prepared to protect our protectors and the Clovis way of life. Clovis first, Clovis always. Let's fill up on the truth. Rudy Salas is the only Democrat who voted against the gas tax increase. Salas voted against increasing the gas tax. That's the truth. Meanwhile, David Valadeo's helping big oil jack up prices at the pump. Just this summer, voting against cracking down on oil company price gouging. And Valadeo's taken over 450000 from the oil and gas industry. Fed up when you fill up? Thank David Valadeo. House Majority Pack is responsible for the content of this ad. Science proves your best sleep is vital to your mental, emotional, and physical health. And we know 80% of couples sleep too hot or too cold. Introducing the new Sleep Number Climate 360 Smart Bed. The only smart bed in the world that actively cools, warms, and effortlessly responds to both of you. Our smart sleepers get 28 minutes more restful sleep per night. Proven quality sleep, only from Sleep Number. In Washington, the powerful only look out for the few. But I look out for the people of our valley. That's why I helped pass the Inflation Reduction Act that lowers drug prices, like insulin for seniors, secured billions of dollars for water infrastructure and a clean, reliable water supply, while delivering health care in rural communities, especially during COVID. I'm Jim Costa, and I approve this message because the Valley is our home, and I will never stop fighting for us. Families are struggling, and David Valadeo is making things worse. Valadeo voted against capping insulin prices, refused COVID relief for families, but his family business took thousands, even opposed raising the minimum wage. David Valadeo, out for himself, but Rudy Salas is putting the valley first. Salas got overtime pay for farm workers and stood up to drug companies to lower insulin costs. Rudy Salas, lowering costs, standing with us. DCCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Get local news that matters at the new yourcentralvalley.com and your certified accurate forecasts every day. KC24 News is always available at yourcentralvalley.com. KC24 News is brought to you in part by HR Mobile Services. A chilly and dry start to the day, but this afternoon, by the end of the afternoon, and I should say, we are expecting rain to return to the Central Valley. Our first storm of the season. It's not the biggest rainmaker, but it's something to get things going. And it's actually more of a decent snowmaker for local mountains, so good news right there as we move forward into the month of November. 50 degrees in Fresno, 56 in Sacramento, 50s and 60s along the coast. Matter of fact, a good portion of the southwest in the 50s and 60s this morning because of that cloud cover keeping things a little mild in some locations. Parts of the valley that have some clearing this morning mainly the South Valley. Temperatures in the 40s, 45 for Hanford, 46 this morning in Porterville, but Fresno, Madeira, Merced in the low 50s this morning. We are warmer for most of the valley compared to this time yesterday. The cloud cover uh, throughout the night into early this morning traps into the warmth. We saw some sunshine here and there yesterday, and that allowed us to move up into the 70s before our temperatures, so that cloud cover traps in the warmth. It is going to be cooler this afternoon, though, and the winds are going to pick up. Matter of fact, a little gusty in the west side of the valley through the Pacheco Pass and uh, through the uh, coastal area, as you make your way through the coast along the 41 in Kings County. So winds will develop from the northwest close to 15 miles an hour, and then they'll transition from the south to 15 miles an hour. Quick look outside to show you a light picture from our Valley Cam, one of our new Valley Cams at Herndon and Palm in northwest Fresno. Uh, clear skies for the most part, traffic calm. Your drive home from work or school is going to be interesting. That's when the rain's going to roll in for most of the valley. Right now, most of the rain's in the Pacific Northwest and the extreme northern portion of California. High pressure's moving out of the way, allowing for this system to move in. Future 
forecast shows the clouds building throughout the day. Might even see a little bit of sunshine here and there, but about one o'clock this afternoon, those showers approach the extreme northwest portion of the valley, Los Banos, Gustine, Newman, and then maybe Madera, Fresno as early as four o'clock this afternoon. You do see some yellow and orange popping right here. That's more impressive, more moderate to heavy rain, but more likely we're going to have some light rain. That's the green. Snow levels start off about five or 6,000 feet, then they drop down to 5,000 feet tonight, but it's going to start off as rain, then it transitions to snow as the temperatures get colder later on today into tonight. Still might squeeze a shower or two out of this tomorrow morning into the afternoon, mainly for the west side of the valley, and we're going to keep the cloudy skies and much colder temperatures tomorrow. Up in the Sierra, it's a winter storm warning that goes in effect at 1 o'clock this afternoon, about central Fresno County, northward in the Sierra through Yosemite. Highest elevations of the Sierra hopefully could pick up a foot of fresh snow more likely three to six inches closer to 5,000 feet. And of course, rainfall totals for certain portions of the valley could be close to a quarter inch of rain. I think that's more likely to the north and east side of the valley, especially in the foothills. Uh, those are the areas that have a better chance of picking up at least a quarter inch of rain. Seven day forecast shows after this, it's going to cool off fairly fast. We're going to be in the 50s, still a shower or two for tomorrow. And then we're going to stay in the 50s for a few days and then some clouds roll in this weekend. We might pick up a little bit more rain on Sunday. And we got that time change where we fall back one hour and get an extra hour of sleep and it will remain cloudy and cool into next week. Your regional forecast available any time of the day. Just go to yourcentralvalley.com to check it out. For now, we'll send it back to you. With the midterm elections just a week away, the Fresno County Clerk's Office is warning you of voter intimidation and fraud. It comes after the Clerk's Office received several claims of ballot fraud or intimidation. The Sheriff's Office is in charge of investigating, and then the DA's office would decide if there's enough evidence to prosecute. It could be something as simple as photographing a voter, which is illegal in California, whether they are voting at a vote center or dropping off a ballot at a drop box. It could be uh, yelling at a voter or even talking with a voter. Voting centers are open across the valley and operate from 9 to 5 each day. On election day, they will be open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. And to have your vote counted, if you are mailing your ballot, it must be postmarked by November 8th. KC 24 Sunrise Time 622 still ahead. Part of the Valley World War II heritage has been restored. A place on life for a historical mural. Next. Coming up today at 3, there is a day for everything. And today it's Vinegar Day. See how we mix this unexpected ingredient into cocktail hour. Plus the simple shower switch that could save you a bundle. Today at 3 on Central Valley Today. We know Rudy Salas. In Sacramento, we paid him over a million dollars, and he skipped over 400 votes. When Rudy did show up, he voted for a new tax on prescription drugs that would have drained money from the most vulnerable. Worse, we pay the highest gas prices in the nation, and Rudy voted to stick us with even higher gas prices. Rudy Salas has failed the Central Valley. Rudy Salas is not for us. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. I'm David Valadeo, and I approve this message. Rudy Salas didn't show up for work almost 450 times, but he did show up to increase the price of gas by 73 cents a gallon and backed reckless spending that made inflation worse. And if Rudy Salas gets to Congress, he'll be a rubber stamp for Biden and Pelosi's agenda. Selling out the Central Valley, turning his back on us. Because Rudy Salas is a politician who only looks out for himself. Let's fill up on the truth. Rudy Salas is the only Democrat who voted against the gas tax increase. Salas voted against increasing the gas tax. That's the truth. Meanwhile, David Valadeo's helping big oil jack up prices at the pump. Just this summer, voting against cracking down on oil company price gouging. And Valadeo's taken over 450000 from the oil and gas industry. Fed up when you fill up? Thank David Valadeo. House Majority Pack is responsible for the content of this ad. I'm Adam Gray, and I approve this message. John Dwarty doesn't live here and hasn't done a thing to lower gas prices. I voted to stop the tax on diesel for tractors and trucks, and I wrote the bill to suspend the gas tax. I took on Sacramento to protect our water and our jobs. That's why Valley sheriffs and local newspapers support me. I'm the independent Democrat for Congress. 
aspiring educator? Go to yourcentralvalley.com and tell us. Each week, KC24 News honors one exceptional local educator. They win supplies for their classroom and are added to the teacher's honor wall at Fresno State. We applaud. We honor. We celebrate. Educator of the Week, Wednesdays on KC24. Brought to you by Educational Employees Credit Union, Fresno County Superintendent of Schools, and Tulare County Office of Education. Welcome back. All is calm right now and things will be dry for most of today, but rain will finally return to the valley late this afternoon into this evening. Take you outside first to show your conditions. Live picture from our valley cam at KC24. We're looking off to the uh, southeast. You see the cloud cover at the top of the screen, but we do have clear skies off in the distance and seeing a little bit of sunlight there. Of course, sunrise close to 715 this morning. Our temperature trend shows we're dropping into the 60s today. Rain will arrive late this afternoon into this evening and the cold air behind the system will drop us into the 50s for our High temperatures starting tomorrow, and then we'll be back in the 60s for most of this weekend. Lunchtime, cloudy and breezy out there with temperatures in the 60s, and then the showers arrive later on this afternoon. And definitely expect rain by sunset tonight, and those winds will continue to pick up into this evening. After this, we do have another chance of rain. I'll show you exactly when with the 70 forecast in a few minutes. For now, we'll set it back to you. A ribbon cutting ceremony at the Clovis Veterans Memorial District of the refurbished Hammerfield mural originally painted in 1942. The historic Hammerfield was an Army Air Force military installation located on the site of the Fresno Air Terminal. When the field was set to be demolished in 1987, the mural was preserved. It was first displayed at the at museum, now preserved at the Veterans Memorial District. KC 24 Sun by Sun 626 still ahead. Is there a power struggle for Fresno residents? We're not talking about a political power struggle, but local politicians are getting involved. We're going to tell you more coming up. How many stars are in the U.S. flag? 24. There is really a sellout going on. Almost like a cover-up. All new Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, today at 4 on KC24. Join us for Clawson Motorsports' fourth annual Veterans Motorcycle Run on Saturday, November 5th. For Rudy Salas, it's a charmed life. Paid the highest legislative salary in the nation, even as Californians pay the highest gas prices. Given over 80,000 bucks in free gifts and trips. Some were financed by groups pushing a bill that could raise gas prices 73 cents a gallon higher. Salas backed their bill, selling you out. They paid his way. We paid the price. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this ad. Fresno Unified is hosting community idea exchanges. Last year, your feedback had a big impact on district investments. For example, the district heard about the need for more mental health staff and services, so Fresno Unified invested in additional supports, including psychologists and social workers. Also, based on your input, the district invested in technology to support learning both in the classroom and at home. Now we need your help to plan for next school year. To join the conversation, visit FresnoUnified.org. Don't let the insurance company push you around. Get a law firm that can push them around. The team at Jacoby & Myers has gotten our clients up to 10 times the insurance company's original offer. Don't settle for less. Choose Jacoby & Myers. Prop 26 is a massive expansion of gambling in California. It would give wealthy tribal casinos a virtual monopoly on sports betting. No wonder every major California newspaper opposes Prop 26. The Fresno Bee says voters should reject Prop 26. The LA Times calls Prop 26 toxic and a bad bet. The Mercury News says Prop 26 would enable reckless profiteering. Vote no on Prop 26. I'm David Valadeo, and I approve this message. Rudy Salas didn't show up for work almost 450 times, but he did show up to increase the price of gas by 73 cents a gallon and backed reckless spending that made inflation worse. And if Rudy Salas gets to Congress, he'll be a rubber stamp for Biden and Pelosi's agenda. Selling out the Central Valley 
turning his back on us. Because Rudy Salas is a politician who only looks out for himself. Next, all new Drew. Drew and Megan Trainer play matchmaker. It's called Drew Love. Plus, Ralphie's back. Peter Billingsley. Next, Drew. The Drew Barrymore Show, today at 2 on KC24. Sliced fresh sandwiches, pour the subs. Local news that matters. This is KC24 News Sunrise. I had on KC24 Sunrise. More than a dozen people hit during a shooting on Chicago's west side. I just saw this, everyone crying and people down on the ground. It's a drive-by shooting during a vigil that injured at least 13 people. And the city of Fresno is discussing the possibility of becoming their own energy provider. It's, it's 140, 150 days out before they can provide the crews so then people can put in their, their electric meter and move into their home. Why Fresno County elected officials now say they have lost confidence in PG&E. Plus, today is Dia de los Muertos. And it brings that tear or that emotion to my heart. And so I think that's very, very significant for people to know that that's what we do. A one special exhibit in Dallas is paying tribute to lost loved ones. KC24 Sunrise starts now. Good morning. Welcome to KC24 Sunrise. I'm Brody Logan. Caroline Collins has the day off. Thank you for joining us. It is the first day of November. It's 631 on this first day of November. This is what it's going to look like for your day as you wake up and get outside. It's going to change a bit later today. Ruby Gutierrez says, look at the forecast. Those clouds now from uh, what will be our first storm of the season. And of course, it's going to take a while to get here. Everything's calm on our radar right now, but say about 630 tonight, you're definitely going to be dealing with some rain for a good portion of the valley. And at that point, we're going to start to see a little bit of snow start to fall in the Sierra. But uh, Merced, you could see some showers develop as early about three o'clock or so. Fresno and portions of Tulare County, probably closer to four or five o'clock this evening. Temperatures today in the 60s, cooler compared to the last few days, and we're actually below average. And there'll be a bit of a breeze from time to time. Time. Also, portions of Kings County are going to have to wait until very, very late in the day. It's the end of the day for rain. It's going to start off as rain in the mountains for today. Snow levels will be about 6,000 feet and then drop down to 5,000 feet tonight into tomorrow morning. So, Shaver, you'll see rain this afternoon, but that will transition to the snow later on tonight. Yosemite Valley will pick up some rain, but Yosemite National Park, it will be snow. Plus, we got a winter storm morning in effect. We'll talk more about this storm and maybe another chance of rain in the coming week in a few minutes. First for now, we'll send it back to you. Well, new this morning, a man is recovering in the hospital after being shot in South Fresno Monday night. Police said that approximately 11.15 that night, a sergeant driving the area of church in Chestnut in Fresno found two men having an argument. After approaching them, one of the men, a 31-year-old, told the officer he had been shot 20 minutes earlier around Chestnut and Butler Avenues. Well, after investigating, police located a spent bullet casing and other evidence at Chestnut and Liberty Avenues. The victim was taken to CRMC and is in stable condition. At this time, police don't have a suspect or any information about what could have caused this shooting. Anyone with any information is asked to contact Fresno PD. A man is in stable condition after being hit by a car late Monday night. Police say the 39-year-old man was crossing Olive Avenue outside the crosswalk when he was hit by a car around 10.30 p.m. The vehicle that the person who struck him with their car then left the scene. Officials say they need help to identify the car and the driver, and they are investigating further. The man was transported to CRMC and is said to be in stable condition. The Fresno County Sheriff's Office is asking for help after a man was shot and killed over the weekend. 19-year-old Angel Zuniga was at a Halloween costume party on the 8,000 block of East Hedges Saturday morning. Detectives say a fight started and shots were fired. The 19-year-old was shot and then died at the scene. While investigating deputies say they learned that approximately 200 people were at the home when Zuniga was shot. But most of the partygoers had already left before deputies arrived. Detectives are now asking those at the party to come forward with any video or pictures they may have taken while there. Arrests have been made in connection to Zuniga's death. A woman has been killed after she overturned her SUV on a highway Fresno, in Fresno on Monday afternoon. That's according to the CHP. Around 12.50 p.m., officers were called out to the area of Highway 99 and Jensen Avenue at the report of a crash. When officers got there, they found a 55-year-old woman who had suffered major injuries inside the car. She died at the scene. Now, while investigating this, officers learned that the woman was trying to exit the highway when her vehicle veered onto a dirt shoulder along the off-ramp. 
The woman wasn't able to regain control of her SUV and flipped it over on its side. Four people got sick after a carbon dioxide leak at LAX. One of those patients is still in critical condition. Three others were treated at the scene. The gas is believed to have come from an electrical utility room with a carbon dioxide fire protection system. Flights in and out of LAX were somewhat impacted, particularly inbound United Airlines flights. They were all temporarily halted. No travelers were among those injured. Another mass shooting in this country, this one in Chicago. The police say up to 13 people were shot, some of the victims, children, one just three years old. There are no immediate reports of anyone having died from these shootings. Astro Martinez has the latest. More than a dozen people were hit during a shooting on Chicago's west side. Police say the incident began and ended in just moments. We know it's a drive-by. We know it happens in just a few seconds. Uh, it begins and then it's over by three seconds. The car is pulling out after driving by and shooting uh, randomly really into the crowd. Chicago police say among those hit a three-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 13-year-old. The rest were adults. A person was also hit by a car. Police believe the crowd was gathered, at least in part, in remembrance of someone who died recently of natural causes. There was a vigil that we understand that was being the balloon release was happening, but the, there may have also been others gathered for other various reasons. Investigators say surveillance camera video showed at least one car and two shooters. One witness on the scene said he heard as many as a dozen shots. I just saw this, everyone crying and people down on the ground, and I just called it in, and then I just went to, to try to help people and direct the uh, ambulance people to where the bodies were. Police say there's no history of conflicts on the corner and have not yet determined a motive. That was Astro Martinez reporting. Now, at the moment, the injuries range from critical to non-life-threatening. Well, authorities in Delphi, Indiana, have announced an arrest in the murders of two young girls killed five and a half years ago. Libby German and Abigail Williams were found murdered in February of 2017 in a wooded area in Delphi, Indiana. So there were some composite sketches of a still photo of a man authorities sought in connection to the murders. Police announced Monday they have arrested Richard Allen in connection to the deaths. Allen worked at the local CVS pharmacy in Delphi. According to the family, he processed photos for them at the location. Libby German's grandfather says the announcement by police is bittersweet. It was a uh, kind of bittersweet, you know, it's... Uh... I just know that there's another job, another hill for us to climb ahead of us, but we're up for the challenge and we're going to keep after it. We're not going to stop. CVS has issued a statement saying, in part, we are shocked and saddened to learn that one of our store employees was arrested as a suspect in these crimes, end quote. South Korea's police chief on Tuesday admitted a heavy responsibility for failing to prevent the Halloween crowd surge in Seoul that killed more than 150 people. Yoon Hee Kun said an inv initial investigation had found there had been many urgent calls by citizens trying to notify authorities about the potential for disaster on Saturday night. He said an internal investigation would probe deeper into the officers handling of the emergency calls and other issues, like their on-the-spot response to the crowd surge. The government faces growing public scrutiny over whether the surge could have been prevented and who should take the responsibility. KC24 Sunrise Time 638 still ahead. Is there a power struggle for Fresno residents over power? Why the mayor of Fresno along with two council members want to pull the plug on PG&E. And rain finally returns to the Central Valley. First year 40 allergy forecast brought to you by Boz Allergy. Elm and Juniper, the top Hollands, were in the low range through Friday. I'll show you when the rain arrives and how much we could expect as KC Sunrise continues. Here we go. Silas, what puts you so on edge about this building? It's the man who runs it. Why are you here, Gavin? Do something. As in what? What if I give you all the resources this hospital has? How can you help? Politician Adam Gray. You pay his salary, but he skips work. Skipped over 150 votes. Didn't even vote to stop the gas tax. When he does show up, 
His votes make things worse. Gray voted for a multi-million dollar tax on dairy farmers, a $3 million tax on grape growers, and a massive tax increase on livestock feed. Adam Gray, we're better off without him. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. I am sick of politicians failing to keep us safe. I will always ensure violent criminals serve their full sentences. Unlike Mark Pazin, who let an accused double murder go free and accidentally released a convicted sex offender, with crime on the rise, I secured nearly $2 billion for law enforcement. Mark cut officers, then quit his job as sheriff to take a cushy Sacramento political gig. I will never quit on keeping your family and our community safe. Let's fill up on the truth. Rudy Salas is the only Democrat who voted against the gas tax increase. Salas voted against increasing the gas tax. That's the truth. Meanwhile, David Valadeo's helping big oil jack up prices at the pump. Just this summer, voting against cracking down on oil company price gouging. And Valadeo's taken over 450000 from the oil and gas industry. Fed up when you fill up? Thank David Valadeo. House Majority PAC is responsible for the content of this ad. To protect Valley families, State Senator Melissa Hurtado took on her own party, fighting against the early release of violent criminals. She's working across party lines to increase funding for local law enforcement and crack down on human traffickers. Now, as the Valley faces a fentanyl crisis, Hurtado is working to prevent overdoses and save lives. Endorsed by California's police chiefs and first responders, State Senator Melissa Hurtado. She's all Valley. I love spending time with my grandchildren. Their health and happiness are always on my mind. As a dad, grandfather, and an Omni Family Health physician, we've made health care a family tradition. Along with 200 Omni Family Health providers, we care for your family as if they were our own families. At Omni Family Health, I've been caring for neighborhood families like yours for over 37 years. Our family serving yours. Omni Family Health. Welcome back on this Tuesday morning. Things are calm. It's dry out there, a little chilly, and we're starting to see some clouds move in. But the rain is going to hold off until late this afternoon, this evening. Quick look at the radar, though. This is showing calm conditions, and it's going to start off as rain in this year, but it'll transition to snow. Uh, if you're at 6,000 feet, you'll see a little bit of snow this afternoon down to 5,000 feet. That's more likely later on tonight into tomorrow morning. Winter storm warning in effect for the northern Sierra uh, through Wednesday. Right now, things are calm and traffic is moving along. Live picture from Caltrans. This is their traffic cam at the uh, 41 and Bullard Avenue in North Fresno. You can see traffic moving along. Things are fine for your morning commute. It's the drive home where you're going to deal with some rain, especially towards 5, 6 o'clock uh, for a good portion of the east side of the valley. And after this, we cool off fast. Still a shower or two tomorrow. Highs in the 50s. We'll see more clearing by the end of the week. But under the weekend, we could see a little bit more rain. I'll have that seven-day forecast for you in a few minutes. First for now, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Ruben. So the city of Fresno is now discussing the possibility of becoming their own energy provider after the mayor and then other Fresno County elected officials say they have lost confidence in PG&E. Builders say they've waited around 150 days to have the homes they've already built connected to the power grid and energized. That way, homeowners can move in. PG&E says the reason for this is, well, in their statement, requests for new gas and electric service connections are out pacing or forecasted demand resources are more costly due to inflation and supply chain delays in their statement some builders say the issues go beyond not having the proper equipment once you get the transformers installed because they don't have the crews they can't hook up the power even though they got transformers it's, it's 140 150 days out before they can provide the crews so then people can put in their their electric meter and move into their home we reached out to PG&E to confirm if they've let crews go or if they've stopped contracting crews hooking up homes to the power grid. We have yet to hear back from them. The Fresno City Council will look into hiring a consultant to see if making the switch on energy providers is worth the city's money. It is yet to be approved by the council and will come into discussion on Thursday. Tesla's ATV for Kids being recalled because it does not meet federal safety standards. The Cyber Quads for Kids made by Radio Flyer is meant to be a toy for children eight years and up, but according to Consumer Product Safety Commission, it fits the legal definition of a youth ATV. Cyber Quads cost $1,900. Owners of the recalled ATV can get a full refund once the vehicle is disabled. KC24 Sunrise Time 644 still ahead. 
Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is here. How one special exhibit in Dallas is paying tribute to loved ones. What I see on KC24, stories of everyday people making a big difference and an impact in our community. I see passion. I see a collective driven to make changes in public policy, voicing concerns and advocating issues, making the valley better for everyone. I see local stories making an impact. So I want to invite you to see it all here every day on KC24 News. Fires and natural disasters have devastated our national forests. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees coast to coast. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Car wreck? You need to call the heavy hitters. Why? Because we have the power of more. We'll tell the insurance company why you should get more. And we'll fight to get it for you. Call the Curtis Legal Group and get the power of more. Call 1-800-LAW-3080. We know Rudy Salas. In Sacramento, we paid him over a million dollars, and he skipped over 400 votes. When Rudy did show up, he voted for a new tax on prescription drugs that would have drained money from the most vulnerable. Worse, we pay the highest gas prices in the nation, and Rudy voted to stick us with even higher gas prices. Rudy Salas has failed the Central Valley. Rudy Salas is not for us. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Some people are born to hustle. They just know their way around a good deal. That's why we hired them all. At Marshalls, our buyers hustle every day for the brands you love. They can tell the quality to cost ratio simply by touch and know what makes Bone China different from porcelain. Impressive. But most importantly, they know that that bag is amazing, so we'll take them all for the right price. We get the deals, you get the good stuff. Marshalls. To protect Valley families, State Senator Melissa Hurtado took on her own party, fighting against the early release of violent criminals. She's working across party lines to increase funding for local law enforcement and crack down on human traffickers. Now, as the Valley faces a fentanyl crisis, Hurtado is working to prevent overdoses and save lives. Endorsed by California's police chiefs and first responders, State Senator Melissa Hurtado, she's all Valley. Car wreck? You need to call the heavy hitters. Why? Because we have the power of more. We'll tell the insurance company why you should get more. And we'll fight to get it for you. Call the Curtis Legal Group and get the power of more. Call 1-800-LAW-3080. KC24 News is brought to you in part by Central Floor Supply. Welcome back on this Tuesday morning. Temperatures are chilly now, a little cloudy out there. Conditions are dry, but as we move forward into the afternoon, the clouds are going to continue to build, and we could see some showers maybe by 1, 2 o'clock for some portions of Merced County, the extreme northern portion of Merced County, but for Fresno and a good portion of the South Valley, probably waiting until between 4 or 5 o'clock this evening. 50 degrees in Fresno, 51 in Merced, a little bit warmer compared to the rest of the valley because of the cloud cover trapped into that warmth we picked up of high temperatures yesterday. A little bit more clear to the south, so it's cooler, a little bit more chilly, and uh, Lamore at 44 degrees, 46 for Porterville this morning. But most of the valley warmer compared to this time yesterday, holding on to the warmth that pushed our temperatures into the low to mid-70s yesterday. Fairly seasonable temperatures for the last day of October. Winds calm for the most part, but on the west side of the valley, they are picking up through Pacheco Pass and through the 41 as you make your way through the coast along the uh, Kings County line with the coastal areas here. They're going to pick up from the northwest close to 15 miles an hour and then transition from the south later on for today. So it's going to be a little breezy at times. Here's the cloud cover right now from our Valley Cam. Live picture from one of our new Valley Cams in the South Valley at the Tulare Outlets in Tulare. Notice the flags outside the shopping center moving around a little bit, so winds are picking up just a little bit. Calm and quiet in the foothills right now. Live picture from Lake Cahuilla. This is Sequoia Parks Conservancy webcam up there in Tulare County. That's one of the areas that will see rain, but higher elevations will pick up snow. There's the storm right now moving into the Pacific Northwest and Northern California right now. We're going to see those clouds increase throughout the day. High pressures moving out of the way, and that kept just fairly mild yesterday. Future cast shows the clouds increasing throughout the day. This is about 1 o'clock or so. Approaching the Los Banos, Newman, Gustine areas, some rain. And then about maybe 3 o'clock, moving into Merced. 
4.30 this afternoon, Madera, northern Fresno, good chance of rain moving in. And you see some yellow and orange right here. That's more moderate to heavy rain. That's a good sign right there. And then it moves into the east side of the valley as we approach sunset for tonight, including some heavy showers towards Fresno. But rain will begin in the Sierra. Then it transitions to snow, about 6,000 feet or so. Then tonight it transitions to 5,000 feet. So you're going to deal with rain first. And then as it gets colder, we're going to deal with snow. And that can continue into tomorrow. For the valley, still an isolated shower or two if possible. But today is the best chance of rain for us locally. Locally, and it's going to happen late in the day into the afternoon. Central Sierra for about Fresno County northward into Yosemite. A winter storm warning goes in effect at 1 o'clock this afternoon. If all goes well, the highest train of the Sierra will pick up a foot of fresh snow, but more likely towards about 5,000 feet, probably 3 to 6 inches of snow. As for rainfall, quarter inch of rain possible for the valley. Some areas could get a half an inch of rain. That's just one suggestion for one cubic model, but I think more uh, quarter to half inch rain more likely for the foothills, and I think anything at best will get a few uh, tents in some parts of the valley. 67 today, average is 71, and we're in the records 88. 70 forecast shows we're in the 50s after today. That cold air is going to settle in. Still a shower or two possible for tomorrow. We'll hold on to the 60s for most of the weekend, but we do have a chance of rain returning on Sunday. Plus, we got that time change where we fall back one hour and get an extra hour of sleep Saturday night, Sunday morning. Your regional forecast available any time of the day. Just go to yourcentralvalley.com to check it out. For now, we'll send it back to you. Well, it is November 1st, which means it's Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. This year, one exhibit at the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport is celebrating the holiday. Kim Molestina has a story. The sounds, sights, and cultural significance of this exhibit are mostly rooted in Mexican heritage. It's called Dia de los Muertos. The literal English translation is Day of the Dead, but Rafael Luna, the man behind this vision, is adamant it shouldn't be confused with the name of a popular movie. He wants everyone to say the name of this holiday tradition the way it was intended to be said in Spanish. Dia de los Muertos. It's a celebration where we honor our ancestors, our people that have gone to the afterlife, and we want to bring them to our home. We want to bring their names to our, our, our mouth. Per Dia de los Muertos tradition, those beloved souls are remembered by setting up altars with their pictures and some of their favorite items, and that includes food. Those individuals are many times depicted with sugar skulls, creating an entire genre of art directly tied into a culture, immortalizing their lost loved ones. And it brings that tear or that emotion to my heart. And so I think that's very, very significant for people to know that that's what we do. I did my best to make them look, you know, soft, loving, you know, friendly. Alfonso Hernandez is the artist behind some of the most prominent displays at the uh, awesome. exhibit, including this massive tribute to departed Tejano singer and legend Selena. He was also commissioned to create this. He looks like somebody, right? He looks like somebody around here. A Dia de los Muertos depiction of the State Fair's most iconic ambassador. It's a, it was a challenging one, right? From a, from a design perspective, um, you know, from a respect pers perspective, right? You know, just, you know, trying not to be distasteful. While the significance of Dia de los Muertos can oftentimes be described as being celebratory, that isn't always the case. And this is a perfect example of that. This altar honors all of the lives tragically taken in the Uvalde massacre. Do you find this to be joyful or painful? I think it's a little bit of both. At this altar built within the exhibit, every name and photo of the Uvalde victims includes a special request. I want it there to be an action, an action item for each child. Which he hopes people will take in honor of those killed. While heartbreak is inevitable when thinking of lost loved ones, Luna says this exhibit proves that smiles can also be had when remembering fond times. I want to make sure that our culture is represented the correct way. KC 24 Sunrise Time 653. We'll take a look at this morning's top stories after this. Donald Trump's biracial former girlfriend. She quotes him as saying, you got your looks from your mother and your intelligence from your dad. Yeah. The white side. Next, Inside Edition. Inside Edition, tonight at 7 on KC24. Education matters at KC24, and we're dedicated to bringing you inspirational stories of students finding new ways to strive for success. Watch these Education Matters stories now at yourcentralvalley.com. Just click Education. KC24 News is brought to you in part by Midland Tractor. 
Celebrate America's men and women of service November 5th at Lawson Motorsports. Join KC24 and great local partners at the 4th Annual Veterans Motorcycle Run. Ride to protect the sacrifices made for our country and our freedom. Get local news that matters at the new YourCentralValley.com and your certified accurate forecasts every day. KC24 News is always available at YourCentralValley.com. When you have connections, life is good. And life's really good for Sacramento politician Adam Gray. You paid his salary and benefits most of his adult life. Gray took lavish trips and gifts from special interests. Gray played the system. Even his scandal-ridden father-in-law got in on the gig. Registered as a state lobbyist once Gray got elected. Adam Gray, he's connected the Sacramento way. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Let's fill up on the truth. Rudy Salas is the only Democrat who voted against the gas tax increase. Salas voted against increasing the gas tax. That's the truth. Meanwhile, David Valadeo's helping big oil jack up prices at the pump. Just this summer, voting against cracking down on oil company price gouging. And Valadeo's taken over 450000 from the oil and gas industry. Fed up when you fill up? Thank David Valadeo. House of Majority PAC is responsible for the content of this ad. With violent crime in our communities and the cost of gas, food, and medicine rising, we need a leader in the assembly that we can trust to fight for us. Not a quitter like Mark Pazin. While murders in Merced County hit an all-time high, Mark shamefully abandoned his post as sheriff, quitting in the middle of a gang crisis to take a fancy Sacramento political gig. We can't trust a politician like Mark Pazin, who already turned his back on us. The stakes are too high. I'm Adam Gray, and I approve this message. John Dwarty doesn't live here and hasn't done a thing to lower gas prices. I voted to stop the tax on diesel for tractors and trucks, and I wrote the bill to suspend the gas tax. I took on Sacramento to protect our water and our jobs. That's why Valley sheriffs and local newspapers support me. I'm the independent Democrat for Congress. The Valley's Armenia, the mission returns November 16th on KC24. Look at today's top stories. The Supreme Court began hearing arguments that will determine the future of affirmative action at colleges. The nine justices spent five hours hearing oral arguments in two cases involving Harvard and the University of North Carolina. The schools defended the use of race as part of their mission policies, but several justices questioned whether affirmative action is even needed. Any ruling could have profound impacts beyond education. The court is not expected to rule until next spring or summer. A man is in the hospital after being stabbed early this morning. Fresno police say it happened just before 5 a.m. near Cedar and Shields. Officers say a man in a wheelchair got into a confrontation with another man. Then the man in the wheelchair was stabbed multiple times. He went into a bank, went to a bank ATM, which was well lit, to try to get help and was taken to the hospital. Police are saying his wounds are non-life threatening. Officers are now trying to find the other person who left the scene. A man is recovering in the hospital after being shot in South Fresno Monday night. Police say that approximately 1115 that evening, a sergeant driving in the area of Church and Chestnut in Fresno found two men having an argument. One of them told the officer he was shot approximately 20 minutes earlier around Chestnut and Butler Avenues. After investigating, police located a spent bullet casing and other evidence. The victim was taken to CRMC and is in stable condition. At this time, police don't have a suspect or any more information about what could have caused this shooting. Man is in stable condition after being hit by a car late Monday night. Police say the 39-year-old man was crossing Olive Avenue outside of the crosswalk when he was hit by a car around 10.30 p.m. The driver that hit him then fled the scene. Officials say they need help to identify the car and driver, and they are still investigating. And our temperatures today, they're going to be on the cool side, a little chilly out there this morning. Let's take you outside first to show you a live picture from our Valley Cam in Northwest Fresno at Herndon and Palm Avenue. As you can see, conditions looking all right there. The clouds are starting to move in, making for a beautiful sunrise. Uh, things are going to be dry out there for most of today. As we move forward into the lunchtime hour, it'll be a little cloudy and breezy from time to time. Temperatures in the low 60s and our highs today only in the mid 60s. For the most part, rain will arrive, say, the extreme northwest portion of 
Merced County about 1 to 2 o'clock, then about 3 to 4 o'clock Madera County, then Fresno close to 4, maybe even 5 o'clock this evening, but definitely expect rain towards sunset tonight. Plus, those winds are going to start off in the northwest close to 15 miles an hour, then they'll transition from the south. Cold air settles in tomorrow. We're going to be in the 50s for a good portion of the valley. Still might have a shower or two in the morning, and remember, we're talking about snow in the Sierra starting off at 6,000 feet, then dropping down to 5,000 feet by tonight. Plus, we got that winter storm warning in effect later on this afternoon all the way through Wednesday. Hopefully, three to six inches of snow at 5,000 feet, close to a foot of snow at the highest elevations. Then we have another chance of rain Sunday, and that's the time change where we fall back one hour, get an extra hour of sleep. We'll send it back to you. All right, stay tuned for the Today Show. That's on next. We'll be back at 11 for KC 24 midday. Have a great morning. everybody. Good morning. It's Tuesday and we're learning more about what may have motivated that brutal attack on Speaker Pelosi's husband. And officials are knocking down conspiracy theories about the attack itself being pushed online. It's November 1st. This is today. New twist. The suspect in that vicious attack on Paul Pelosi telling police he wanted to take the House Speaker hostage. This as he gets set to appear in court today facing a slew of charges including a attempted murder. What I do know, him being at that house was intentional, deliberate, not random at all. We are live with the very latest on that investigation. Breaking overnight Halloween violence, more than a dozen people, including several children, wounded during a mass shooting in Chicago inside the push to find the gunman. Neck and neck with one week to go. New polls showing some of the nation's closest races getting even tighter. Candidates now beginning to make the final pitch to voters where everything stands this morning. Opening up, Tom Brady breaks his silence with his most candid comments yet on his divorce. I'm really focused on two things and taking care of my family and certainly my children and Secondly, doing the best job I can to win football games. How the NFL star says he is adjusting to his new life on and off the field. Uh. All that plus, surprise, a diver getting in the water finds herself face to face with a massive shark. I rushed in the water too fast and she totally, she reacted to that. What she's saying to us about that very close encounter. And lottery fever rising. No Powerball winner overnight, sending the jackpot even higher. $1.2 billion now up for grabs with a new race to buy tickets underway. Today, Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. From NBC News, this is Today with Savannah Guthrie and Oda Cuppy. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Good morning. Welcome to today. It's a Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. on the West Coast. Glad you're with us. The Powerball jackpot is more than a billion. I think it's 1.2 1 1 .2 billion. billion dollars. Nobody uh, won it, which means you can still win. Uh, yeah. There's another drawing coming up, I think, in a couple of days. Yeah. So we'll have a lot more on that. And actually, speaking of money, mm -hmm. question for you. Mm. Do you know how much your coworkers make? Mm. Should you? Do you want to? <laughs> Tom Costello is going to join us with a closer look at the growing push for pay transparency. This is going to get folks talking. Indeed it will. All right, but well, we are going to start with that chilling evidence now emerging in that brutal attack on the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, the suspect is set to appear in court this morning facing a slew of charges and new details are coming to light this morning on his social media posts focused on far-right extremism and now that is leading to a string of new online conspiracy theories about the attack itself. NBC national correspondent Miguel Almaguer is right there in San Francisco with the very latest. Good morning, Miguel. Hey guys, good morning. For the very first time in just a few hours, the suspect will be in court where he faces a judge. He's charged with several felonies, including attempted murder. The DA will ask that he be held without bail. It comes as we learn new information about the, the attack and what else was planned.
According to a new federal complaint, the man accused of attacking Paul Pelosi with a hammer told police he wanted to hold House Speaker Nancy Pelosi hostage and break her kneecaps if she didn't tell the truth. His alleged intent to have Nancy Pelosi wheeled into Congress to show other members of Congress there were consequences to actions. This was politically motivated. According to the federal complaint, officers found white rope, a roll of tape, 